Most Americans have one thing in common. Their families came from somewhere else in the world. If good records have been kept, each of us can identify and give thanks to those ancestors who left their homeland in pursuit of a dream and a better way of life. Our story begins with John and Emma Kinsey, this family's original pioneers who made the long journey across the ocean to begin their lives as Americans. John Kinsey Sr. was born at Wolverhampton, England, November 15, 1822, and died in Centralia, Illinois, May 18, 1901. Emma Gilmore, who was his wife, or would have been my father's grandmother, was born August 1, 1824, at North Shields, England. They were married in Birmingham, England, where their first child, John Kinsey Jr., was born December 3, 1847. John Sr. was a rule maker and had spent seven years as an apprentice in that trade. They made carpenters rulers, probably the brass-bound folding type. But like all inventions, machinery was beginning to take the place of handwork. And he and his friend, Richard Allen, began to think of coming to America. They, with their baby, left England in the spring of 1849 in a sailing vessel and were on the way for six weeks. Emma was seasick most of the time and never had any desire to make the trip again. After arriving at Jamaica, Long Island, New York, my grandfather and Mr. Allen set up their own cabinet-making shop, which existed about 10 years. Then the two men began thinking of going west. During those years, four more children had been born to John and Emma. They were Sarah, Emma, Mary, and Tom. Mr. Allen decided to come to Illinois and settled in Centralia as a machinist in the Illinois Central Railroad Shop, which was a new railroad. John Sr. had a desire to go west and acquire farmland. At that time, lands in Minnesota were available for homesteaders, so he decided to go out there and look into the situation before taking the family. The family settled in southern Minnesota, somewhere between Winona and Mankato. Suffice it to say that the Kinsey family were true pioneers in every sense of the word. As a child, I heard many times how Indians came one day and motioned for my great-grandmother, Emma, to follow them. She apparently was frightened but did not want to show it. They led her to a grove of sugar maples where they showed her how to bore holes in the trees in order to collect the sap for making sugar. They came another time and now were intrigued by Mary's golden curls. They put their black hair against her curls and grunted in delight. The winter that the family moved to Minnesota my great-grandfather taught the settlers' children in their home, riding horseback to make his rounds. Then, before he really had time to do much with his farm, President Buchanan called all the lands on the market to be sold. My great-grandfather decided to move on south to Iowa. It was fortunate because the next year, there was an Indian uprising in that locality and a big massacre of the whites. family lived a year in Iowa on rented land, then decided to come on to Illinois, having heard good reports from their friend, Mr. Allen. They left Iowa sometime in the winter and planned to cross the Mississippi when it froze. 
Traveling with a covered wagon and ox team, they came as far as Davenport, where they had to wait several days until the river froze over. They crossed on New Year's Day, 1862. My grandfather, John Kinsey, Jr., walked most of the way to Illinois driving the family cow. He was 14. Very shortly after renting a farm southwest of Centralia, John Kinsey Sr. bought a farm southeast of Centralia. He kept and farmed that farm until he died at the age of 78. My father's father, John Kinsey Jr., came to this country when he was only two years old. He was born in 1849 in Birmingham, England. And he married Fanny Leffel. And Fanny was born in Springfield, Ohio. And she came from Pennsylvania Dutch stock. Very well thought of woman. She died. In 1917, when my father was a senior in, in college. So I never saw my grandmother, uh, Kinsey. I wish I knew the year that my grandfather, John Kinsey Jr., started to acquire the land one mile south of Centralia that would become the Kinsey Farm. But my guess is around the year 1880, when he was 33 years old. Dad and later Aunt Grace both would tell me how their father would buy a 40-acre piece, mortgage it, then work to pay it off. He eventually accumulated 266 acres to make up that farm. My dad, Alfred Richardson Kinsey, was born on the farm south of Centralia that his father, John Kinsey Jr., had worked to acquire. Dad was the youngest of three. He was born August the 19th, 1893. Uncle Ernest was two years older than Dad. Aunt Grace was the firstborn and two years older than Ernest. Dad grew up loving and working the farm. He and Ernest were inseparable those formative years. It was a happy and hard-working family, the Kinsey family, who nurtured and husbanded that southern Illinois farm one mile south of town. By the time the three children were growing up, it was a well-known landmark in that part of the country. When Alfred was 16, the house was moved from its hilltop view to a site near US 51. The house stood along US 51, surrounded by great maples for many years. It subsequently gave way to urbanization. A manufacturing plant stands there now. I can't tell you how many nights I dream about that house and that farm. A lot of hard work went in to making the Kinsey Farm a successful operation. The family tilled the land with horsepower. Later, a Fordson tractor was acquired to power the threshing machine and the silo filler. But the fields were plowed, disked, harrowed, planted, cultivated, and harvested with horses. Horses, when worked hard, had to be well cared for. This meant plenty of grain, good hay, plenty of water and rest between rounds. Dad was a good horseman. He was quick to note the horsemanship of horse owners and especially the horsemanship and or lack of it with some farmers. And he would point out to me any instance he would see sore shoulders on horses of other farmers caused by poor fitting collars. Dad always made sure that the collar being used on any particular horse was the right size for that horse. You had to easily slip your hand under the collar. You couldn't have that collar too loose or too snug. The rest of the harness was important, but not as important as the collar. After graduating from the University of Illinois, 
Alfred went to Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, in charge of a group of students who had signed up as part of a college program to go north to the Great Prairies and help open up the wheat fields. Alfred was the one who stayed. He stuck it out for 12 years, farming his land and he was raising wheat. In 1919, he met a girl named Lola Lagergren. Well, Dad was already in Canada, of course, and had been up there a couple of years. And he was already established um, on his farm. He was also working for Edgar Petersmeyer. Now, Edgar Petersmeyer is a first cousin of my mother's. So, Mother goes to Regina to visit the Petersmeyers. What Mother kept hearing was, quote, you've got to meet Al Kinsey. So day after day went by and she had not met Al Kinsey until the evening before she was to go back to Chicago. Lo and behold, here comes the Ford truck driving up the driveway of the Petersmeyer farm and of course driven by Alfred Kinsey. So at last they got to meet and uh, she just got no more than uh, an introduction to Alfred Kinsey when it was over, and uh, the next day she's on a train going to Chicago. But something sparked there. So, and of course, Dad stayed up in Canada watching over his farm most of that winter. But he went back to Centralia. And the, during the time that just after they met, as time went by, they corresponded. When March of that next year came around, I guess it was on, on his way down to Centralia. My uncle Howard said to Dad, Al, when you're going through Chicago at Union Station, be sure to call my, my folks. So when Dad got to Union Station, he called the Lagergren. My grandmother said, well, Al, you, you've got to come out to the house and have dinner. My dad stayed the night, and then uh, the next day went on down to Centralia. That was in the late fall of the year. But by the next spring, well, when my dad was going back to Saskatchewan, he stopped in Chicago and stayed there for the rest of the week, and he and my mother were married. My, can you imagine this? My mother had been engaged to Johnson Ford for five years. And she never really cared for Johnson Ford. My dad stayed there and th their, their courtship was just one week and they were married. They spent their honeymoon in the Loop in Chicago and then traveled on to Regina, Saskatchewan. My dad had this uh, farm leased out 16 miles south of Regina. So that's where he took his bride in this little two by four beaver board house. And my mother has said many, many times that those were the happiest years of her life. My great-grandfather from my mother's side of the family was Wilhelm Lagergren. He was a cabinet maker in Lulia, Sweden. He married Katrina Stradling, and they had three children, Charles, John, and Albert. Before John and Albert were born, the family emigrated to America around 1865 with their oldest child, my grandfather, Charles A. Lagergren. He was born in Lulia, Sweden. His career was spent as a sergeant on the Chicago Police Force. And when it comes to personalities, my grandfather was probably Rocket Gibraltar personified. I mean, uh, 
Charlie Lagergren was salt of the earth and solid as a rock. He married Bertha Reed, and that Reed is spelled W-R-E-D-E. -E. And my grandmother always said it was pronounced Reedy. The family was known as the, the Reed family. And she came from a family of eight children, seven brothers and sisters. And they had a nice life there in, in South Shore, and they only had two children, my mother and her younger brother, Howard. Howard was seven years younger than, than mother. My mother was Lola May Lagergren Kinsey. She grew up in Chicago. She was a city girl, and she was a secretary in a law firm. She was a wonderful typist and a wonderful pianist. She studied uh, piano and music for 10 years. So she truly was, uh, in her own right, a, a, a wonderful musician. Alfred and Lola Kinsey had three children, Dorothy, Charles, and Grace. I was born August the 4th, 1922, in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And both my sisters were born in Chicago. Gracie, my younger sister, was born April the 19th, 1924. So she's the last one in our family. I probably should tell you a little bit about our growing up days on the farm in Centralia because we got there in 1929 and right at the bottom of the Depression. Farm life was hard in the days of the Depression, but wonderful too. Mother and Aunt Grace canned hundreds of jars of tree-ripened peaches in those years, and they canned tomatoes, cherries, strawberry, jam and preserves, apple and pear butter to say nothing of the jars of delicious and spicy sage pork sausage. Aunt Grace used to make apple butter in the big black kettle over a fire at the back gate. Farm life itself takes a lot of hard work. Livestock has to be tended to, and cows have to be milked twice a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, no exceptions. When that's your way of life, you don't question it. We didn't really realize there was a depression on because we raised most of our food. Now there was a, a country school that was a one-room schoolhouse. And my mother, being from Chicago, did not want us to go to this one-room schoolhouse where they would have like eight grades in one room so they would take us uh, by car to Centralia. We were about three miles out of town. And that's the way we were transported back and forth. They didn't have buses in those years for transportation to the schools. The Kinsey family has branched off many times since John and Emma came to America over 150 years ago. We certainly have hundreds of relatives out there that we don't even know. But we are grateful for those we do know, and we cherish them. Each family has its own lineage to trace and a story to tell. This one is ours.